educators and engineers work together to plan for the future of autonomous systems. Plus, the P8 Alpha pushes ahead with full rate production. And now their volunteers use fun to foster a love of learning among future scientists and engineers. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Lauren Prue. A soaring start to the new year for the P8 Alpha program. The Navy's newest maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft is approved for full rate production. The announcement paves the way for a planned delivery of 117 P8 Alpha aircraft to the fleet over the next several years. Last month, the Navy awarded a $2.4 billion contract to Boeing Defense and Security Systems for the procurement of the first 16 full-rate production aircraft. The P-8 program achieved initial operating capability in November 2013, followed by the Poseidon Squadron's first deployment to 7th Fleet in Japan, where they are currently participating in missions. To date, the Navy has received 13 low-rate production aircraft, which the program office says were delivered on or ahead of schedule. The transition from the P-3 Charlie Orion to the P-8 Alpha Poseidon is expected to be completed by 2019. Successful arrestment testing at Joint Base McGuire-Dix Lakehurst, New Jersey brings the F-35 Charlie one step closer to the fleet. The F-35 test team completed 36 roll-in arrestment tests using the MK-7 arresting gear, which is currently used on board aircraft carriers. The tests were designed to evaluate the airframe of the Navy's variant of the F-35, which features a redesigned arresting hook system. Loads data on the MK-7 was collected, which will help the Navy prepare shipboard gear for at-sea arrestments with the F-35. The aircraft will spend the next three to four months conducting carrier suitability tests at Naval Air Station Patuxent River. This next phase will include fly-in arrestments, which will lead to certification of the F-35 Charlie for shipboard flight. A new infrared sensor will increase situational awareness for the FA-18 Super Hornet. The infrared search and track system completed its first flight aboard the Super Hornet from Edwards Air Force Base, California. It is a long-range sensor that searches for and detects heat sources. The system can also track multiple targets at the same time and provides a highly effective air-to-air -air targeting capability, even when encountering advanced threats equipped with radar jamming technology. The requirement for an IRST on the Super Hornet is a direct result of advancements in threat electronic warfare systems. This is one of many next generation capabilities that will be added to the FA-18 Super Hornet over the next several years. So here's a tough question. How do you get kids really excited about learning? You bring them to STEM Day 2014. Now their scientists and engineers hosted a learning carnival full of games and activities related to science, technology, engineering, and math. By participating in various fun activities based on physics, chemistry, and other STEM topics, students gained a deeper understanding of how classroom theory applies to real life. It has our own particular flavor. What we've done is we've reached out to the Board of Education. We've asked for the, uh, the science and math learning objectives out of the core curriculum. What we've done is we've turned those into demonstrations. And uh, so we're looking at engaging both kids and their parents to generate a symbiotic relationship and, and synergy where we hopefully obtain a, a persistent pursuit of STEM. At this age, I mean, their brains are just sponges and, you know, they grasp onto these concepts and they'll, they'll hold on to them and, you know, when they see them in high school, they'll say, oh, I remember doing this at STEM day and, you know, it, it allows them to connect, you know, the practical side of, of STEM as well to, um, to what they're learning in school. I think it's always nice to be able to help kids understand things more and I really get the pleasure out of you know talking to them and then having them realize something on their own and just kind of seeing their face light up like that you know helping their development. 130 kids participated in the event held at the College of Southern Maryland in Leonardtown, Maryland. This is the first of many STEM events planned for this year. Two F-35 Bravos conducted a formation flight for the first time, proving the aircraft can safely fly close together. This is the first time two of the Marine Corps variant aircraft have flown in close formation while in short takeoff vertical landing mode. During the Mode 4 test at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, the F-35 Bravo flew with the lift fan engage and the engine rotated downward. The mission measured the effects the aircraft will have on each other while operating in close proximity. The Marine Corps plans to declare initial operating capability with the F-35 Bravo next year. Call it a futuristic meeting of the minds. Members of the academic community came together with industry and government officials for an autonomy workshop at the Southern Maryland Higher Education Center in California, Maryland. 
It was an opportunity to discuss the important role unmanned systems will play in years to come and determine how engineers and educators can work together to enhance system capabilities. This technology corridor right here in, in uh, Pax River, uh, we're, we're trying to gain a, uh, a critical mass, if you will, on autonomy research. And one of the ways we're doing that is uh, partnering with the University of Maryland and the Southern Ed Education Center here and uh, trying to build our local expertise and brain power with regards to autonomy and unmanned systems. Grow that through basic and applied research in hopes that you know something that is invented here you know, will go on and, and get into our systems in the future. The aircraft carriers of today have a lifespan of 50 to 100 years. With that, we need to make sure that the capabilities that are resident on those carriers um, maintain that relevance. Unmanned systems and the technologies, the, the unmanned systems are three subsystems that, where you have the air vehicle, or I'll say the platform, you have the control systems, and you have the launch and recovery capability. You need to make sure all those three things work together. And the science and technology being pursued by corporate and private industry, academia, and in our own organic DOD and Navy labs are the enablers to make that happen. Since an avoid technology, unmanned systems learning behavior, and the future challenges of autonomous systems were some of the topics discussed during the workshop. You can learn more about unmanned systems by visiting the NAVAIR news page at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. And that's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.